Welcome back. You're still watching SABC's News Channel. Now, the Pan-African Parliament, currently in its sixth ordinary session of the fourth parliament, yesterday re-elected uh, Roger Nkodo Dang as its uh, president for a second term. Dang, who is uh, a member of the National Assembly of Cameroon, won 59% of the 224 votes cast. But uh, his win is being largely attributed to divisions in the legislative body of the African Union. The divisions appear to be along regional lines and between Francophone and Anglophone countries. A number of MPs are not happy about this, including a bloc from Southern Africa. And one of these is Zimbabwean politician and PAP uh, MP, uh, Tembo Meliso, who joins me now. Thanks very much for joining us and welcome to the program. No, thank you very much, uh, Peter. It's good to be on the program. All right, so Mr. Dang got 59% of the vote. That's quite significant. Surely that's democracy in action. No, I don't think it's democracy in action. Democracy is also about the unwritten issues, which are the founding fathers of Africa were very clear that the presidents would be rotational. And being rotational, it means that one region would uh, have that term, uh, would have its term, and as you can see that he was a vice president before he was president, and now he has gone to two terms. So in effect, he's been there for 15 years, because including when he was vice president. And that's from Central Africa. And again, you've got other regions. You've got the northern region, you've got the west region, you've got the southern region as well, east region. Where are they in terms of also having a bite at the cherry. It's important that we respect that rotational system which is there because then there's no democracy. Mm. As much as they might not say it's not in black and white, common law prevails. It's like the aspect of law bola at the end of the day. It's not written down, but if you're going to marry <laughs> into somebody's as family, from an African point of view, you pay is, is, it, is it constitutional? Is it one of these unwritten protocols that one uh, adheres to, but it's not law? Exactly. I think he's taking advantage of the fact that it's not uh, in black and white. Mm. As a result, they take advantage of it. But equally, common law can still stick. Mm. And I think it was important that PAP as an organization equally ensures that he sticks to that because that is how he got into power. And equally, he must allow others to do that. There's aspect of, uh, from, a, from a corporate governance point of view, he also went into power without even reporting on his last term which is unprocedural. Mm. You must be able to account for the time you're in office, not to then be in office and then account later. So you will continue doing that. Any leadership is based on accounting and what you did. Okay, we'll talk about the report just now, but I just want to understand how the maths works, because if it's just a question of uh, people voting, will it always favor francophone Central Africa? That is true, because what really is also not proper, that uh, Southern Africa, through South Africa, is where the Pan-African Parliament is housed. And that shows that Southern Africa has played its part in adhering to the common law, which was there. And at the same time, you cannot be housing Pan-Africa, yet you also don't lead. It doesn't make sense. And the Anglophone and Francophone countries then gang up, and because of the numbers that they have, and then prevail at the end of the day. For how long can that happen? To me, that's not democracy. Democracy is about understanding mm. where there should be regional balance of power. So how do you fix this? How do you get away from this regionalization and this uh, francophone, anglophone battle within the uh, Pan-African Parliament? For me, I was very happy to see Honorable Malema, now part of it. DDs, Honorable DDs are part of it from South Africa. I'm also happy to see Honorable Venani, who's opposition leader from Namibia, uh, being part of this, and also Honorable Butali, and also Honorable Mumba, and also Honorable Temple from Switzerland. I see there will be a change. I think uh, Honorable Malema was very clear. If his first call was, where is the accountability before the president's office? So when you see a person like Malema there, there's also that generational approach where you've got to see young people coming in. And I think that will certainly, he will not get away with murder when you've got the, the, the people from South Africa and Southern Africa mm -hmm. united. For the first time, they went into this election as the Southern African caucus very united. And before that, they were very divided. But I think that is a plus in terms of bringing in that change mm -hmm. that is needed. So the president uh, failed to table this report. He literally just walked out of uh, the PAP to allow the uh, elections to take place. He's back in his seat. Can he not present the uh, report now? You, I think Honorable Malema was right in bringing this up from a point of order, saying that the president has escaped. 
and he did escape. He did not do things properly, and you must appreciate that these, the Honorable Malema must understand the rules. And in understanding the rules, he was never e equally given the chance to be told how it's run, how it's done. And there is no way you can have a president who is supposed to give his report when he was in office, not being able to give his report. That is suicidal, that is corrupt and acceptable in terms of governance. And then it only shows that it will take a long time for Africa to account to its people. What is in this report? Might it have altered the vote if it had been tabled in time? Yes, his performance is critical because if you're going to stand for an election, people must understand what you've done. And he was never able to do that, especially from a financial point of view, where he was accused of using PAP money to visit 31 countries in the process he was campaigning. So he was supposed to justify and be able to explain and exonerate himself through a report saying I did not go to those countries to campaign. I used my own funds and I did not use PAP money. So it is important that those who are funding PAP stop funding PAP because the president is not able to account for that. I would not and I would push for those organizations putting money into PAP, not to support PAP until you have a leader who's prepared to account for the resources given to him, especially financial resources, whereas Africa, we are known to always okay, dip into, the, uh, into, 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 into what is not ours. We cannot afford that to really label Africa as people who cannot account mm. for themselves. Do we, do we know what the state of finances is for the uh, Pan-African Parliament? I know for a long time this was one of the struggles that you had and ended up having to get funding from outside of the continent to keep it going. It is true. The mere fact that you're getting money from outside the continent shows that your own continent does not have faith in your leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's from an accountability point of view. And I think uh, CAP, uh, 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 which is the, uh, the, the committee of PAP that does the audit, and which was chaired by um, uh, uh, Honorable Fortune Charumbira, who was a contestant, they were not allowed to present their report. And financials are pretty critical in you getting more money or not getting any money. Mm -hmm. So how then do you have a situation where you're in power and the money what that was given to you is not accounted for at the end of the day? So you will continue doing this and less and less there will be no money coming for PAP which affects development. If we just take the voting pattern of the uh, uh, election yesterday, 60% uh, almost that voted for uh, Mr. Dang, does that mean that 60% of the parliament will protect him? They will certainly protect him and what uh, is pretty apparent is that we also need to have leaders with capacity. It is about time Africa does not vote from a partisan point of view, mm -hmm. from, a, from, a, from, a, from a political point of view. Let us elect leaders with capacity, who are equally young, who are able, because if you don't have capacity, you're compromised. And what he did, because of the position that he's in, he is able to give something to those that don't have capacity, and in turn, they're able to vote for you. Is that the leadership we want? So the aspect of capacity, resource is equally important for the members of parliament to be well resourced, because if they're not well resourced, they are compromised. So you're actually uh, uh, with a team of people who are compromised, who are likely to go for the person in control, and who's likely to say to the staff as well, if you don't play ball, I'll equally not bring you back in office. All right. I am uh, Jean-Claude uh, in Cameroon or uh, Jabu in Soweto or uh, Kofi in Ghana. Why should I care about what happened yesterday? What is the Pan-African Parliament doing for the ordinary citizen anyway? You see, well, this is out of the AU. The mm. same question that I asked, what is the AU for? The same reasons the AU was set up is now argumented legislatively by PAP. The, you've got South Africa as a country. You've also got the Parliament of South Africa, which is legislative. That they must understand from that point, the role that PAP plays in ensuring that as Africa, in terms of us having one passport, one currency, stems from the work that PAP would have done. So PAP is critical in bringing Africa together, being united from different languages. Why can't we have one language? Why can't we have one currency? This is what PAP then stands for, and it must be seen to be doing that, so that, that Africa is united in whatever it does. All right. Well, let's uh, hope that uh, you uh, fix these challenges uh, because uh, the people on the continent are looking towards you as our leaders to get these things right and unify the continent. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Temba Mliswa, thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Okay, that's where we're going to leave it for the time being. And when we come back, we'll have your headlines for you.